Hi, I'm Tyson, and this is a little bit of information about how to identify a rip. As you look out to sea, you'll see that there are lots of waves coming towards shore. Now, these waves, or the water in those waves, has to get back out to sea somehow, and it just takes the easiest way possible. It might travel along the beach and then find a headland and follow that back out, or it may even carve its own little trench through the, the beach and the shoreline and travel back out to sea there. And where the water travels back out to sea, that is the rip current. Now, if you look at this beach, you can see there are lots of waves coming in. And you might also notice there's a few bits where there are no waves breaking at all. Now, if there are no waves breaking at all, that would usually indicate that there was a rip current in that spot. You can see in this, um, this shot that there's waves coming through on the right hand side of the picture and there's a few on the left and then kind of just about a third of the way in from the left hand side there's this kind of darker patch and that will be where the rip current is. With a rip current, because there's a lot of water moving back out to sea, it will usually carve a bit of a trench through the beach uh, and the shoreline. So you can identify that. It will obviously be a bit deeper and it might appear a lot darker. Another thing you might notice is that there will be some white horses or chop. This is, if you think about a, a river, um, where a river flows out to sea, it's usually a little bit ruffled and basically because the water's moving out so fast, it has a, a ruffled appearance to it. In this shot, you can really easily see where the rip current is. You see the waves are coming into the right-hand side and the left-hand side, and then they pull. There's a giant pool just on the inside, and then it's carving out a trench to the right-hand side of the waves, and there are just no waves there breaking at all. Okay, so it's a really deep spot and the water will be moving out there quite fast out to sea. In the next shot, you can see there are waves just in front of the, um, the lifeguard truck, and there are waves to the left-hand side of the screen. And then once again, in the middle, there's not a lot breaking at all. So that would identify a rip. And if you look really closely, you can see that the water is a little bit ruffled, and it's even slightly discoloured. So the things that would identify a rip would be slightly discoloured water, slightly darker water and a little bit of chop and also there would be no waves breaking in that in that particular part of the rip. So how do you get out of a rip? Well rip currents don't go on and on forever. They simply go back out beyond the breaking waves and then they stop. So if you're caught in a rip there's two things you can do. You can just go with it, go right out the back and then paddle to one side, parallel to the beach, back into the waves, and then you can catch a wave back in. And it's the same if you're swimming, you just paddle parallel to the beach, and then swim back in through the waves. Um, what you should never do is try and fight against the rip, swim against the rip, because you'll just tire yourself out. The other thing you should never do is ditch your surfboard. If you're on a surfboard and you get caught in a rip, just go with it. That board will float for years and years and years, whereas you'll find it a little bit harder to float. So stay with your surfboard and just paddle parallel to the beach, out of the rip current, and back into the waves, and then catch a wave to shore.